Hi, I'm Robin Hardin, and this is Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding your dreams and visions. We're coming to you today on location where Angela shares a pretty disturbing dream in graphic detail. And Chris shares a couple dreams that will most certainly bear witness with your spirit. We're excited. Okay, we're ready for you. <laughs> uh, as me and my friend Carl were riding our bikes along like what seemed like a sidewalk or slash trail next to a stream or a river and his ex-wife and son had joined us and all of them were in front of me so I could only see their backs and the uh, alligators or slash crocodiles or something was like on the side like if 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 you're walking in the middle of the street, the the street was the like a river, like mm -hmm. and the sidewalks was like like a like a dirt road, and it was, I guess alligators or something. But they was like in line like cars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were lined up along the riverbank, and they were under water mostly with their noses and eyes exposed. They were really close to me, like like how you are right mm -hmm. now. Kind of like riding a bike on the sidewalk and the street represents the river and the crocodiles were right next to the curb of the sidewalk. That's how close they were to me. And the crazy part is that I had some McDonald's french fries in my hand and I was trying to feed them. <laughs> but they wouldn't take them. Only one of them opened his mouth like he was going to eat the fries and the rest of them just watched me ride along the trail or sidewalk. And the thing is, I was I was in striking distance, but they never tried to strike me. They were lined up like cars on the street, parked on the curb. And one thing that I noticed that I was not scared at all. So I kept pedaling my bike and I looked ahead and asked my friend, where was his son? At, Cause I couldn't see him and then I woke up. Mm. I love that because the bicycles are, it's a, it's a vehicle, it's, but it's only one. It's just one person on a bike at a time. So that's a one-on-one -on -one ministry and that's what God's called you to, to witness at work, to one-on-one. -on -one. It's not, hey, I'm gonna get up in front of a whole congregation. It's it's that one-on-one, -on -one. and you may even be a Sunday school teacher or a pastor, but it's the one-on-one -on -one that he's really using you in, that, that uh, hands-on. And it's not quite as easy as a car, so you gotta keep your balance. Think of everything that is involved in a, in a bicycle. It's recreational, but it's a, little, it's a little work, and that's the kind of ministry God's called you to. But you keep referring to the road as the river, and the river is the Holy Spirit. So you are in the Holy Spirit, and He's got you. And that's why those alligators or crocodiles can't get you. And they are hidden because that's what the enemy does. He just smells you and he sees you and, you know, he stays, and they're lined up. I mean, it's not one. They're like, the enemy's lined right. up. But God has given you what's in your hand. What did he say to Moses? What is in your hand? He, Moses had a stick in his hand and God made it a staff. And he used that staff to get water out of a rock. And, and God is saying to you, what do you have in your hand? You're like McDonald's fries. fries. But it's what you have. So he's telling you that you already have what you need. Amen. He's already, you're in the water, you're in his Holy Spirit. And the enemy is lined up and he's waiting for you. He's watching your every move. He's trying to smell, that's discernment. He's trying to figure out what can he do to get you. But as long as you're on that straight in on the water and, you're, and you're, your friend is with you. Now there is a concern because his son isn't there and you know we don't know what happened there. It's very important that your friend, even though his marriage is over, that he remains a father to this young man because that is what's happening to our young men. And it's not a race thing, it is a global thing. Our fathers are absent, and that's why our children are disappearing. And they're disappearing in the sense of they become gender confused, they become gangsters, they become addicts. They just, whatever the world has for them, they disappear into the world. And the main reason is because they don't have a father figure. The father is so important 
the Bible talks about the father blessing. Remember the, the woman who put the animal skins and tried to trick her husband, you know, yeah. about this, this is the wrong son B because she wanted the father's blessing over her son. If she could have given that blessing, she would have just done it. But he had to be the one to give the blessing. Right. That's why the, in the die, you know, the, the prophets get old and the, the people bring their sons to him. If the mama was able to do it, she would have just done it. The father's blessing is not something women can do. And that's why it's so important that the fathers are there. Whether they're divorced or not, they can still be a father to this son. So it's like, but you know, your friend's on the water, he's on the bike, he's doing the right thing, but he, he's got to be a father to this son. And you already have what you need with these crocodiles. And the crocodiles, I'm glad they were, you mentioned that. When you think of a crocodile, you basically, or an alligator, you think of their mouth, their teeth. That's because that is the attacks that the Lord wants to use, the devil wants to use against you is from the mouth. Um, people, lies, or gossip, or people accusing you, or people, word curses, that's the kind of attacks that you have to, that the Lord has shown you to look out for, more than like a physical thing. Of course, if an alligator grabs you, it's pretty physical. <laughs> but because they're mostly mouths, it's people watching, and they're watching to, to find one little thing wrong that they can point out, or they can falsely accuse you of. Oh, and that's why it's so important that even the assemblance of evil, we have to be so careful because these things are all eyes and nose and they're watching you. And it's not one, they're lined up. But it's because the enemy knows God has something big for you. Hallelujah! This is Bobby Hayden Jr. coming to you from Lebanon, Tennessee. We're here at Joseph's Storehouse praying for folks. And I don't know about you, but I was thoroughly touched today. This is Andre from New York City. He made his way to Lebanon, Tennessee to pray for people today, distribute food. Andre, what happened today? It just touched my heart to be able to just to see, hear people's stories just to come meet them where they are in their lives and share with them the freedom that God has for them. Joseph Storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. Please choose blessings, not the curse. Choose the blessings. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month to help distribute food and God's Word to hundreds of hungry families. You see, Jesus is in the miracle business. glad you're here. Thank you. We're all glad you're here. Um, I was, it was a beautiful spring morning. It was green. The grass was completely green and I was in a, um, I had a bunch of cattle and they were all going to the market. They were all very happy cattle. I mean these cattle just moo in and rub it on and there was, you know, the wooden fence, but everything else around it was vibrant. Even the sun was so beautiful that morning. I could smell the fresh grass and, and the dirt and the hay, and it was just wonderful. It's like a barn here and then the cover, and this is where all the cattle are, and they're getting ready to go through to the truck. And I, all of a sudden, from I'm standing in there talking to the cattle just, you know, because I, I believe that you know, they feed us and they love us and we need to do the same for them. They're all, we're all a cycle, you know. So I end up over on, like behind a tree, uh, over in the field and I'm watching, it was a big truck and I knew that my cattle were going into the truck and, and the, um, oh, these workers, they were half man and the, uh, the top torso was a bull, and the skin the skin did not have um, hair. It was this pinkish, bloody color, um, shiny, and they were slicing my my um, cattle up through the gut and sucking, literally eating the guts out of the middle of it. And I was watching this and thinking, they're, they're stealing my stuff. They're stealing everything that I've got, and I've, 
I've loved and um, and that one turned around and looked at me and his big nostril nose and darting eyes looked at me and I hid and that was the end of that dream. So. Was it the cow that looked at you when you hid or it the beast? It was the beast. It was the beast. That did. It, there was two of them. Okay. And they were sucking the guts mm -hmm. out of my cattle, mm -hmm. literally slicing them up, mm -hmm. taking all the guts and tossing the carcasses mm -hmm. up into the truck. And you know what's interesting is the cattle were on the way to the market, so they were going to be slaughtered anyway. Mm -hmm. But they were loved and they were respected and they were honored the way that you were doing it. And they were happy to give, to sacrifice right. so that you could be nourished and live. But the enemy, that's the enemy. It was perverted. It was, it was something that was unworldly, unholy, and it was cutting open your provision. A cattle represents provision from the Lord because the scripture says that our daddy has the cattle on a thousand hills and that's provision. It, it brings milk, it brings meat, it brings clothing from the hide. And, and so they weren't just taking an animal of yours, they were stealing your life, which we know is what the enemy is sent to do and does do. But this is a warning dream for you that God has the green grass, grass is healing, it's green, the color of grass grows, so the color green itself represents growth or healing. It's a beautiful place, it's a spring day, everything's good, and then and out of nowhere, I mean, you're doing everything right, but God is your provider, and He sees how you took care of and you loved what He gave you. And this translates to material items as well, our homes, our cars. You know, he gives us something, and I preach this to my kids all the time. That's why you clean your room. Not because I'm telling you to, but because you're showing God honor that he gave you this, and you're taking care of what he gave you. Even though, at the end result, those cattle were gonna die, but they weren't gonna die like that. Right. And so it's a, it's a matter of the difference in holy and unholy, and the difference in the love of money being evil, and we needing money to do what God's work. But God's got you, and it's a warning for you not to be shaken to the core, because when it happens, you can go, God showed, you know, He showed me, but He's your provider. You never stop loving us. So I kind of love this way because it's so welcoming and the people here are friendly and they just love God and love to worship and serve Him and it's just an awesome experience here and I love to come to Love's Way Church. <laughs> Join Pastor Johan at Love's Way Church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. This is kitchen update number four. I told you previously that we don't do things like most people do. Many times when people update or remodel their kitchen, they tear a wall out to open up the space between their kitchen and their living quarters. We, on the other hand, are putting a wall up between the two for a little bit more separation. Once the wall was put up, we begin to lay the floor. There's always a lot of prep, and then there's the trim work that goes along with it as well. The wall made a perfect frame for my antique stained glass that came out of an old church. I've had this window for over 20 years and this is the first time it's had its own home. I finally have my table back too. It's no longer a workbench. Actually, before it was a workbench and a table, it was an old door. When we first met, it was leaning up against a wall with a pile of other doors and I fell in love. You can even see where the old hinges were. It used to be as we ate here, the cracks were so wide that the food would fall in the floor. So I filled them with wood putty and then I put epoxy on it to kind of level it out. My dad made me some legs for it and a bench. And now I have my very own unique dining room table that looks, I believe, beautiful with this floor. And in case you think that everything went smooth this time, 
this video is short and a little blurry, but this was the leak, the $200 leak, that was found under our house this week. I love a man that journals. <laughs> I mean, it's so biblical. God told, uh, you know, John, write it down. In Habakkuk, write it down. These are men of God. He said, write it down. Yes. Jeremiah wrote all this stuff down, and then they, they burned, and God said, write it down again. So he wrote it all down again, and it's so biblical. I look at it this way. If my boss tells me something, I take notes. Mm -hmm. You know, if my boss calls me when I was working, he called me from New York, I would take notes. Mm -hmm. Well, his boss's 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 boss is talking to you when, right. when you're having a dream. Right. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. He's your boss, and he, right. you need to be taking notes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. This was back in August. Okay. And, uh, it was a night I asked the Holy Spirit for a dream and an answer on a question which I had already asked my pastor for advice on. <laughs> which was about me getting a second job. She gave me her answer or her opinion on the situation. So later that night I prayed on it and I went to sleep and I ended up uh, waking up around 3.34 a.m. in the morning and I was originally supposed to go back to work on that day, on that morning, but I was having pain, so I decided not to get ready for work. So by 5.30 a.m., I made up my mind that I was not going in that day. I ate me a bowl of cereal and took my medicine, watched a little news, and s said a small prayer, and then laid back down and dozed off. This time I had a dream, but I, I couldn't really picture the dream or remember what it was about, but while I was having the dream, another picture or screen popped into my vision like a movie screen. And I could see the vision really clear. And it was like we were all together, the ministry of pursuit, right? And uh I couldn't I can I couldn't actually see their faces. It's like we were all standing they was all standing around me, like standing around me, but I could feel them, like, mm -hmm. I could feel them. I could feel, I could feel them standing around me and talking, having conversations. We were all looking out of a large window, standing side by side, enjoying a view. At first, it appeared we was, we were crossing a long bridge in some type of vehicle, looking out the window at a very large body of water, like an ocean. And in another view, it was like we were on a cruise ship with beautiful miles of water around us and we were all excited and taking pictures. We were clearly in another country. I thought it was another country, even though I ain't never been in another country. So <laughs> it looked like, I don't well, know. Well, you I crossed can... the ocean to get there, so you were in another country. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. then, it's real, okay. And uh, you could tell by the buildings on the shoreline it was no beach, only buildings of different shapes and sizes. Then I hear a voice in my dream, not literally in my head. It was like a strong thought telling me, how are you going to be a good armor bearer if you're always at work? And then I woke up. Mm. Ooh, that sounds like an answer to prayer, doesn't it? <laughs> wow, the, again, the bridge is transition because it takes you from one place to another and you're all together and they are, I've not met you before, but I've met a lot of these members of this group and they, I say this over and over again, pursuit moves as one unit. I have never seen a body in the unity to the degree that pursuit is. They dream about one another, you just did the same thing. They're always there together, you feel them, that's, that's real, they've got you. Whatever you decide to do, they've got you. You're seeing out a window, that's revelation, and you're seeing it together. You're seeing the vision. The water is the Holy Spirit. You all are seeing that you're on the Holy Spirit. He's all around you. You're seeing it together. I love that. It speaks to reaching the world, whether that means going to another country or however that happens. But you all are reaching, you're going to reach other countries and it sounds to me like you got the answer to the, your question. Um, 
is how can you be an armor bearer when you're working all the time? And I know we have to work and we have to support ourselves, but there are ways to honor God by working, because the Word says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. So there's a balance there. Right. But we don't have to work every Wednesday and every Sunday or whatever days that your, you know, your church comes together. God will honor the sacrifices we make and He will provide for you. Amen. But He's showing you in this dream that you are a vital part Amen. of this ministry and they need you. And they need you at, at to share that vision. You're sharing that vision. And it's not, a, it may feel small right now, but it's, mm -hmm. it's going to reach other countries. Mm -hmm. And you're in a transition because there's been a lot of dreams about bridges and hallways, and that's going from one place to another. That's transition. And as this ministry grows, you're going to reach other countries, other, other areas. I guess it's a good thing. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. It is a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing. I'm really excited about my dream journal because it has places in here where I can write my dreams. It also has just some tidbits in here of how to interpret dreams using the Lord and God's Word. And I recommend that you get one as well. In my dream, you know, Andy's standing here and uh, Belda's standing here and I'm standing right here and there's a beautiful light on their face and then it shadows out not not like but swiftly mm -hmm. but not like that you know and um, I moved and transitioned to walk into a place and I'm walking in and I, somebody taps me on my shoulder and says uh, congratulations moving to the White House and then the next person uh, taps me on congratulations you're moving to the White House and it's like it's, this entire place is saying congratulations you're moving to the White House and um, I'm like what is going on I don't understand you know mm -hmm. I'm, that's what I'm thinking in my dream and um, and when I had walked in you know how the big pillars of the building is there and on the top you could see that it was just really bright white and then a tiny bit of a hue of a blue and then uh, you could see the colors, but the colors were colored with gold, uh, shimmery, and everybody was light. They, you could see their color, you could see the color of their skin, but everybody was gold. Mm. And um, the, the uh, car that was sitting there, was sitting, it was a brown car, but it was gold. And um, now from everything, you know, like the White House being white or cream is now gold. And all of a sudden, this man asked me, he says, uh, what are you going to do in the White House? And I said, what am I going to do in the White House? That's what I'm thinking. And, I, and what came out of my mouth was, I'm going to be her executive assistant. And um, then I'm holding, um, I'm standing on the stairs and I'm given um, a gold, some gold um, briefcases that I'm put, I'm handing to another man to put in the car, and, and then a basket. You know those old wire baskets that you put on your desk and you put papers in them. Well, this basket was full of papers. I couldn't read what was on the papers, but I knew they were really important. So I, I had my hand, you know, like this, and I was handing it to him, and he put that in the, and the man says, "When are you moving?" And I said, I'm moving Thursday. And he said, when are you moving to the White House? And I said, I'm moving Thursday. And um, then I go from that and I go into a room and this man is sitting there in the corner and there's a window and there's just a little bit of light coming out of that window, but he's sort of dark. And he has a little child sitting on one side and a little child sitting on the other side. And he said, when are you moving to the White House? And I said, Thursday. And that was the end of my dream. The little man in the end, it kind of confirms what I'm going to tell you, because that was Jesus with the children okay. on his lap, or an angel of the Lord representing him. Because the White House represents authority, government, but the gold tells us, and Jesus being there confirms it, that it's his authority and his government. We're not talking about America's government in the interpretation. 
God is going to promote you. The reason why your current people that you're training under kind of shadowed is because you're going to learn from them, but you are going to advance past them. And this is nothing against them. It's just what God is promoting you. So as you move on, the, the importance of them in training in your life is going to dim. Them as friends of support, that stays the same. But they're no longer going to be who you look to for your training because he's going to elevate you and promote you spiritually into authority that you've not had before. And people, they may already see it. They're going to see it before you do because they're congratulating you, saying, well, when are you moving? When are you moving? And, 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 and you're like, what am I going to do? So they see the gifts in you even before you see them. Many times when we get revelation and God promotes us above our spiritual leader, it's kind of uncomfortable it is. because we feel like we're supposed to still, still come under them and you can respect them and honor them and still be above them mm -hmm. spiritually. He, he promotes us all differently and he's the one who does it. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who's called this and the gold is the value. So everything that you have that he gives you, whether it's the car, or whatever provision you have is gonna be for his glory. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be more than monetarily valuable. And the papers, those are important. They can be top secret. Those are tasks for you that the Lord has. He has tasks for you. And you, He's placed people there to help you. He's placed people there to support you. But this is your promotion. That You're not under, even though you know, you're an executive assistant to someone, but all of us are under someone. You know, all of us are under someone. And and you said her, you it are, it's a, a female. Right. So God has a female in your life, your mother, it could be your grandmother, it could be someone not related, but it's someone who's anointing that you're going to be assisting until you take over, like Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. Elisha assisted until time for him to take over. And this is very much an Elisha, Elijah, promotion mm -hmm. that you have coming. Once you find out in your spirit who it is, ask specifically what is it? What anointing or what gifting or what talent is it? Because whatever that person has, he wants you to walk in, mm -hmm. just like Elijah did with Elisha. And it's, I think that it goes with your first dream. Your first dream, everything's going good. The enemy knows just enough that he's trying to stop it. He's trying to take all that provision. And just like in Job, what happened? You got way better in the second dream. Much more, uh, not just monetary value, but respect and honor and authority. So when the slashing of the cattle happens, don't get discouraged. Because okay. the White House is coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next time on Dreamcatcher, Kay remembers a dream from kindergarten. Her classmates were teasing her because of a praying mantis which had landed on her head. At the time, the dream was scary, but throughout adulthood, the symbols of that dream haunted Kay. Find out how next time right here on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams.